Well, Happy New Year 2022. A bit late, that's actually almost the end of January, but still. Uh, here I am, camped out on my comfy chair in the garage. I've decided that it's important, especially when it's freezing cold as it is, to have somewhere to sit down and think for a moment, rather than necessarily having to just go back indoors. It will lie on the floor. Um, anyway, here I am waffling a bit. So um, I've got a few things to do. As you'll perhaps have noticed, um, this vehicle over here, the, uh, the Dutton has actually been occupying quite a lot of my time um, because of slightly weird faults to do with the charging. All fixed now, I'm glad to say. But so I'm now getting able to get back to the Gilvan. The main project, and there it is. So, there's a few things that need doing. The doors are kind of almost there. Um, the gas struts for the boot lid are still very much a thing. And um, so what I feel I need to do mostly is to finalize the front bulkhead. I'm gonna lift you up now. So, the front bulkhead onto my temporary dashboard is indeed not finished. It's got lots, it's got lots of holes in it, and it's not properly, not properly fastened. And in order to take care of that, I need to take the engine out because it's obviously in the way. However, because I've got lots of half half done things um, in, there's probably an argument for doing some of the easier ones now one of the easier ones that I think I shall do is one that I started goodness me maybe six months ago and that is to do with the bodywork now if you look under here you'll notice there is indeed no sill and that is because there wasn't one when I got it. I think what had happened years ago, somebody had cut the sill off in order to do restoration work on the chassis under here. And since then it's got lost. Um, it, it was never with the car when I got it. So, yeah, missing bodywork is a problem. So, what did I do? You might have glimpsed this piece of fiberglass. Now it turns out that the shape of the sill is actually almost identical left to right. So what I did was to take a mould of the other side of the car and I shall show you that in a second. Here is the passenger side sill cover which as you see is very much present and that uh, piece of tape I just pulled off is a bit of a clue what's going to happen in the story next. So this is the uh, mould that I used to make the replacement sill and <clears throat> as you can see it's covered in, maybe you can't see actually, it's covered in uh, packing tape which unusually for packing tape is clear packing tape. And it's actually very similar uh, to the way I made the mould in the first place. Unfortunately, I didn't film it. So I'll just quickly review, I'll quickly review how it was done. So basically, I covered the sill with packing tape. In fact, some of it's still there. Um, and that was to provide a non sticky surface basically for the glass fiber. Um, covered the whole thing with packing tape. Oh yeah, here's a piece still left and that's the brown sort. And then I sprayed it with um, spray grease. I think it's designed for motorcycle chains or something. And so then I, uh, having done that, I just laid fiberglass over the top of it. Resin, matting, the whole thing and laminating upwards clearly 
wasn't the easiest thing to do because it has a tendency to fall down again and in fact underneath it was virtually impossible which is why if you've noticed there's actually a piece of black quadrant underneath the mould where I couldn't get fiberglass to go around the corner. So yes, I, I created this thing by packing tape, the shape of the sill as it is, and spraying grease. And a fair number of layers of, of um, fibre were put on there, maybe about three or four, I can't quite remember now. Um, all the way along here, of course I had to do the whole length. And uh, yeah, that's how the, uh, the mould was made <coughs> for the new sill. So uh, obviously that has the effect of producing a moulding with the rough fibres on the outside. And that's why you can't just um, make a, a sill to, or a moulding to use. You have to make a mould to create the item you want from. So here is, here is the mould that I made from underneath and there indeed <coughs> is the black plastic quadrant that I used because I couldn't get it to go under. It worked pretty well actually. And this again I covered in packing tape, sprayed with spray grease and then laid fibres on top. And uh, eventually well, after a few layers and a bit of trimming at the ends, that's how I made my new sill. And as I've mentioned, the driver's side sill and the passenger side sill appear to be identical, which is a bit surprising. Um, it, I guess you call this a splash mould. Um, I'm not a, an expert in these things, but uh, these grey patches, that's where I used car body filler to smooth out the horrible creases and things. Um, that I had uh, managed to achieve when laminating upwards from underneath the car. A bit tricky to be honest to do that. So uh, anyway, that's what I did and as I say I did that about six months ago. And the task then was to take a, a natural moulding. Um, the opposite way around if you like to the uh, external moulding. So basically is the depends which side the fibres are compared to the smooth side. When I say smooth, I use the word slightly advisedly because it's only relatively smooth. Um, but as I say, not too bad for a first effort, certainly of anything this large. So, you know, okay, I didn't do this without any experience whatsoever, but the point is, um, here it is. But it needs attaching, it needs uh, finalising, it needs to be uh, uh, where there's a slight gap it needs to be filled in and all of that stuff of course is uh, similar work to fiberglassing that I've already done elsewhere so not too much of a challenge anyway I'm going to take you down and see how that is going to look I'll just put the thing down here for a second okay here we go so here is the missing section and And this is how it goes in. Put some light on it a little bit more. Yeah, but it does need to be attached somehow. And of course, I can't get behind it because the, because the chassis is in the way and the floor mouldings are in the way. Um, I can't, so arguably I should have put this uh, back on when the body was off the car. Yes, that's true, I should have done. Um, but there you go, this is where I am. I'm not taking the body off again to put it on, that's for sure. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to rivet it rivet it to the side of the chassis rail down here seems like a slightly better position uh, 
um, and I'm going to laminate over the joins but uh, it should look a lot neater than that it's just a pity the original is missing and then there'll be some more fiberglassing to be done which will get smoothed over similar to the work that I did if you've been watching these videos similar to work I did on the other side where body work had historically been stove in so that worked out fairly well I think I can do that again Okay then, that's not a bad start. So the uh, sill cover, I think we can call it that, is riveted obviously uh, to the chassis with some silicone rubber behind it to stop water getting into the, the, the tube. Um, the join here obviously needs to be sorted out and I think, I'm thinking out loud now, uh, similar to what I did on the stove inside on the other side of the wing which I showed a moment ago I can actually join it from the front by grinding out here and laminating finally on top of it uh, yeah I reckon I can make a pretty good job of that and uh, I think you'll agree that that looks a heck of a lot better than a piece of exposed chassis so yeah not bad for a half hour job. That's including having to get a new drill bit. Never mind. So I've decided actually to trim the uh, the new piece of sill fiberglass um, and to make it line up here. That's what you, if it was steel I believe you'd call it a cut and butt and then you'd weld it. Clearly that's not possible with fiberglass but what I will do is I'll cut this in here and that will make the, the the original part and new part line up and that will make it easier to infill with fiberglass when I've ground the front out and to get a, uh, a good um, body line so that's what I'm going to do right now <clears throat> I'm going to cut through here um, without um, a cutting the original bodywork but just cutting the the new part Let's see how that goes move you back maybe I should put a mask on Right, so we now have a, a line, could possibly do a little bit more trim there, which I can uh, join up with some alloy strips I think. I'll just trim that little tiny bit off here. Yep, and I still, and I already have my alloy strips pre-drilled. So I can screw those in to force the thing to line up. And uh, then I can set about uh, aligning the, the side the, the two pieces of the fiberglass and uh, 
then laminating them. Let's see how that goes.